The story begins with a beautiful lady being choked because she always looked at the one choking her with that kind of expression. Suddenly, the attacker lets go of her. The one choking her is a man, and he is confused, wondering what's going on. Seizing the chance, the lady attacks him, sending him flying and spitting black blood. Her attack seems to have dealt significant damage to the guy. And that guy is our MC, who is just as confused as we are about the situation. Most of us have already guessed it though. What's happening next? Memories. But his memories are a bit jumbled. He faces off with a guy and touches the beautiful lady from earlier. She seems fine with his touch. There's also a dog covered in blood, and some people are making fun of him. Before he can piece his memories together, he notices a sword at his neck. It's the same beautiful lady from earlier. Now that we see her whole body, she's even more stunning. She's mad and blushing because, despite defeating him many times, he persists. This time, he even pins her down. He apologizes, claiming he doesn't know what's happening. This is the first time I've seen an MC snort instead of having a nosebleed after seeing a babe like her. He's quite unique. A pink-haired lady gets mad because he's shameless. Even though her senior sister doesn't like him, he keeps bothering her. But from what I saw earlier, he was the one pinning her down. So who's the real loser here? He clarifies that he never said he likes the senior sister. Since he can't remember, she leaves without wasting any time. Senior sister and her sibling depart on her flying sword. Now that they're gone, he tries to piece together his memories. He's still confused, wondering if this is a dream. But he can feel all his senses. And he distinctly remembers a name. Ning Yuan. Finally he realizes what's going on. He has transmigrated into a game called the Sword Immortal Legend. And Ning Yuan is the lead disciple of Li Shui Peak in the game. He then remembers the game's storyline, and according to what happened just now, he remembers that it's the scene where an NPC named Hei Ching Yong challenges Ning Yuan and gets defeated. And because he kept pestering Ning Ching Yong, it eventually forced Ning Yuan to get together with senior brother Qin Shen. And after He Ching Yong's demon identity was exposed, he was killed by him. Ning Yuan in the Grand Sky Realm competition half a year later. Then he gets shocked because he has finally noticed that he has transmigrated as an NPC and he will die after half a year. This is just too painful for him because whatever Esekai novels he has read before when people transmigrated, they transmigrated as an overpowered MC. But he, he is just an unlucky NPC. And the worst part is just like you and I, he also skipped all the NPC dialogues when playing games. However, he has completed the game. He has that thing. What is it called? The God's Like Perspective. Then another beautiful lady arrives there. She is also one hell of a beauty and her name is Liao Xin. He remembers her. She is Qin Shen's lackey. She pretends to be kind to He Ching Yong. But on the night when He Ching Yong was completely rejected by Ning Yuan, Liao Xin took advantage of him and squeeze him dry of his essence. And then she transferred that essence to Qin Shen, making his cultivation jumped by two levels. She stumbles on a stone and tries to throw herself on. However, he dodges her and she fell on her face, which makes her super mad. But she didn't show it on her face, asks her junior brother. Why didn't he catch her? And now her butt hurts and asks him to compensate her. Qing Yang doesn't want her to squeeze him dry. So he gets ready to go back to his dormitory, saying that man and woman shouldn't touch each other and open, or her reputation will ruin. On the other hand, Liao Xin is mad because she can't return back just like this. So she lift her poor. But that was her to go with the next plan. On his way to dormitory, he organizes his memories, and that he is an outer disciples of the Lixu Peak. And he also doesn't have a token to leave the Sky Realm, and he can get those tokens by completing tasks. He comes to his room and is planning to leave the Sky Realm before Ning Yuan kills him in half a year. She is already at third stage of condensing Vane's realm while He Ching Yong is still in Kai Refining Realm. Half a year later, she will reach the peak of the Golden Core stage and he will still be a useless disciple. But he is not the old, He Ching Yong. He is Nui Ching Yong and he wants to live a long life. That's why he gets ready to become stronger. Since he has transmigrated into that world of thrilling adventures, he gets ready to fully experience it. Then Liao Xin comes there again. She is not leaving with cheating his essence today. 
She gets ready to comfort him because senior sister Ning Yuan never liked him. However, she likes him, and she is not less attractive than senior sister. She closed the door with that same butt that was hurt earlier. Gets ready to show him the heaven, but to see that heaven he will have to pay a price, and that price is his essence. The price is too much for that few minutes of pressure. She is not leaving without that essence boy. She is ready to take him to the heaven in between the valley and Ching Yong is also feeling something after seeing her like that. He suddenly wants to get close to her and hug her while she is ready to leave him dry. She even push him down on the bed, ready to get into action. Ching Yong also reach out his hand to grab those melons, seeing that she gets ready to push him a little more. But he hits her instead of grabbing those melons. Poor girl went flying and slamming on the wall. Her poor butt. It will hurt again. This time it will hurt real bad. But thanks to Ching Yong, we can see this nice view here. Ching Yong is also surprised to see the power surging to his fingers. He then remembers something that the original host was a demon dog, even though the human form is only a chi refining stage. But because of his demon blood, he's equivalent to the foundation establishment stage of human cultivation, and Liao Xin is shocked to see a waste. Who is only a chi refining stage managed to hurt her, who is at the peak of the foundation establishment. Ching Yong then reminds her again, that he already told her that he doesn't want to touch her for the fear of ruining her reputation. But she still entered inside his room, even though he closed the door with an innocent face. She asks him, why is he treating her like that when she liked him for so long? He then drop a bomb on her head, saying, how does using enchantment spell count is like this shocked her even more, thinking how did a waste like him saw through her illusion? After that, Ching Yong throws her outside from his room, he is not that naive fool from before. He is not going to let her dry him up, and the original host because of his demon blood if he is cultivated, his cultivation speed would have been extremely fast but he chose to be a waste and didn't bother to cultivate. But this Ching Yong is different, he gets ready to cultivate and reach the peak. After all, that's what MCs are supposed to do. But he is an NPC. After that, Ching Yong is being sneaky because he wants to leave from the Sky Realm before he gets killed by Ning Yuan. He gets ready to escape no matter what, without looking behind and slam his face on the thin air. There is a barrier around the sect, and without a token, he can't leave that barrier. A lady from outside comes there, and it seemed like you need to have that big melons to enter and exit from there, because those big melons enter first. This beautiful lowly's name is Zhang Kenke, an outer disciple of the Lishuai sect, chief editor of the Sky Realm Chronicles. She is confused to see Ching Yong there, and wonders if he is the one who is going to kill her. Ching Yong is trying to escape from there, he doesn't want to be found out and informs her that he is just taking a walk there, she has returned from her mission. She hurried back because she heard some interesting news about her junior brother, He Ching Yong, and senior sister Ning Yuan. And she also knows that he doesn't really like Ning Yuan, and he is pestering senior sister, because he doesn't like senior brother Qin. Ching Ching informs him not to worry, because senior sister, doesn't have feeling towards senior brother Chin. He also informs Ching Ching that he never liked senior sister in that way because they are like mountains. Ching Ching is very curious about Ning Yuan and he hardly ever seen sister Ning Yuan. Then Ching Ching wonders who was the one who challenged senior sister and said if he defeats her in the Sky Realm competition, she will have to marry him. And she also sure that she was there and heard it with her own ears. Anyways, she informs Ching Yong that senior sister Ning Yuan received a title from the sect master and can no longer be called senior sister. She should be addressed as Lord Yuehua. Ching Ching then gets very touchy-touchy, with him asking him to share more spicy history of him and Lord Yuehua. She even gets ready to trade three low-grade spirit stones for some gossip. After all, she is a news reporter. Ching Yong gets ready to go to his dorm, but she also follows him because they are neighbors on their way to the dorm. She informs him that he has a pure energy as long as he trains diligently. In three years he'll have a chance to fight with Lord Yahuwah. However, whether he can survive next six months is still uncertain. How can he dream of fighting her in three years? She gives him more info about how amazing Lord Yuehua is. He thanks her for the info, thanks her once again that he doesn't have any feelings toward Lord Yuehua, but his senior sister Ching Ching really wants to see him making progress with Lord Yuehua. After that she informs him about the mission. If he wants to go down the mountain and play freely, he gets ready to do as she said, and take some mission. Which shocked her because before whenever she tried to persuade him to take mission, he never listened. But today he is little proactive. 
wonders why this shocked Qingyang thinking if she found out something unusual. On the other hand, she wonders if he is going to this length because of the power of love. After some time they arrive at the dormitory. She leaves saying if he remembers any story about him and Lord Yuehua. Inform her first. Qingying comes to his room before he entered inside his room. He changes into a dog. This shocked him, but at the same time he remembers that the original owner was a demon dog, and he might revert to animal form at night. Also, he can't speak human language. He gets ready to quickly hide because the Sky Realm doesn't like demons and devils. And if they found out about him, he is sure that they will skin him and eat him. And he is also hungry because he haven't eaten anything since he transmigrated there. Then a lady comes there and is surprised to see a spirit beast there. And that lady is Lord Yuehua herself. She wonders who does this little spirit beast belongs to. But there is no binding charm on Qingyang. She picks him up, asking if he was trespassing there while he is shaking to his core. Then she notices the clothes of her junior, and wonders which junior throw their clothes at the door. She gets ready to take the dog with her and feed it something. He is also finding her smell very attractive because she has a jade spirit body, and her essence can greatly benefit beast's cultivation. He wonders if he should absorb it, but he can't do that. He doesn't have the power to do that. She calls him Little Puppy, which surprises him. Not because she called him Little Puppy, but because of the face she is making right now. It's totally different from when she was looking at him. She even gives him a kiss, saying, Sister will protect you. She then brings him to her room and gets ready to wipe his paws and all. After wiping his paws, she combs his fur after that. She even informs him about He Qingyang, who challenged her and lost. And she is mad because everyone says that he likes her but she doesn't think so. But she actually doesn't dislike her junior brother. He while she was holding him like that he is totally exposed. So he tries to hide his little brother with his tail, seeing that she laughs, saying that she didn't expect him to be shot. And it's already late. She gets ready to let him sleep with her tonight. All types of thought starts to flow inside his mind after hearing sleep together. She starts to take off her clothes, but she still have that undergarments on. They sleep together and she's holding in tightly between her melons. And after she has taken off her clothes, the fragrance of her spirit jade body is even strong and he is unable to hold himself back, but he's a dog. He can't do anything right now. After she falls asleep, he gets ready to leave from there. The window was open. So he escaped from the window. Next day, he arrived at the hall where they take mission, and everyone is talking about him. He King Yong, who is super jealous about senior brother Ken, and obsessed with Lord Yuhua, and always caused her trouble. He have come to accept some low-level mission. But the old man informs him that all the mission are already been assigned and there is no mission right now. He informs him about his situation, and that he is in hurry. Since he is in hurry, he gets ready to give him a mission that no one accepted to take. The Hui Shui Tower Mummy Case. And no one accepted this mission because the reward is only two points. And after accepting the mission, the mission will start when he leave the mount. And if he doesn't complete the mission in two weeks, he won't be able to accept any mission for two months. He gets ready to take that mission. King Yong is little low on money. He vaguely remembers that he King Yong came from pretty good demon family. Something about being from prominent demon dog clan. He wonders how did he King Yong end up so poor. Then his senior sister, King King comes there giving him a shock. She is there because she heard that he has taken a mission. At the same time, Lord Yuehua have also taken a mission. And the mission locations are quite close. She wonders if he did that on purpose. King Yong informs her that it's just a pure coincidence. And man, this senior sister of his, she is begging her stepbro to help her from behind because she is stuck there. She then notices that her junior brother is little low on money and gives him little info about money and that two points can be changed for 10 medium grade spirit stones. This lightened his mood because 10 medium grade spirit stones is equivalent to 300 teals of silver. What's more, if he is in different region, it could be worth even more silver. Then we get to see this beautiful rear view of senior sister Zhang Qingqing, informing her stepbro, I mean her junior brother, to share the story of his romantic adventures with Lord Yuehua when he get back. And she is also sure that if they become dual partners, that will be awesome. And before leaving, she informs him that Lord Yuehua is top choice for dual cultivation. 
However, dual cultivation with Lord Yuehua is out of the question for him. Next morning, he has come down the mountain to leave for the mission. And beside twelve low-grade spirit stones, his low cultivation in God's perspective, he has nothing. And if he leave with just that little money, he can't survive even a week out in the Sky Realm. He gets ready to earn more money and increase his cultivation. He was just playing game and out of nowhere, he ended up in the body of an unlucky NPC. He gets ready to refill water before leaving, and his senior sister, Liao Xin, is washing her feet behind the rock. King Yang gets ready to collect the water. Then they both get shocked to see someone there. And King Yang didn't expect his senior sister Liao to be there. If he had known, he wouldn't come there. Liao asks him if he is there to find her and she is hiding underwater. But she was wearing the same clothes in the public before. He informs her that he was just passing by and stopped there to collect some water. She informs him that it's just two of them in that forest and he shouldn't be shy around her. After all, she is her senior sister who likes him more than Lord Yuehua and is always ready to dry him up. He gets ready to leave from there, asking her to take her time in there. She jumps on him, asking him not to leave her alone there and that he used to be much kinder with her before. She asks him to tell her what did she do wrong. Then he asks a question which shocked her. And that question is senior sister Liao, are you a pervert? She falls down on her knees. She is just shocked to hear that word per per pervert. She in deeply. Hurt because he insulted her like that poor girl. But he doesn't give her crab about her feelings and gets ready to leave from there, saying she should focus her attention on senior brother Ken. A guy was watching them from above a tree. He comes back to Lord Yuehua and informs her about what just happened between Liao and King Yong. But she acted as if she doesn't care and gets ready to leave for her mission. And her mission this time involves demonic forces. She and that junior brother of hers part ways from there. Next, King Yong is ready to leave the mountain, and he has the token with him. First, he pass the token from the barrier, and then leave the barrier. Not like the ladies from before who first let their melons pass and then they pass from the barrier. Even though he has come out from the mountain, but he can't escape because the token has a time limit, and if he exceeds that time limit, he will be forcibly sent back to the Sky Realm. He arrives at the Zoyal County his mission's location after coming to that small town. He went straight to the weapon shop because he doesn't have any weapon on him. Inside the shop, a beautiful lady welcomes him and informs him that she has everything from secret hidden weapons to great axes. Since King Yong is a sword cultivator, he gets ready to look for a suitable sword. One sword piques his interest. He gets ready to buy it. She tells him the price of the sword and it's 10 teals of silver. However, he doesn't have any silver and gets ready to pay with lower grade spirit stones. She gets ready to take three lower grade spirit stones. And now that he has bought the sword, he informs her that he is a disciple from the Yushi Peak in the Sky Realm and asks her about the Flower Water House. She is surprised to her that he is an immortal cultivator. If that's the case, she gets ready to give him some info about that Flower Water House and that it's the largest brothel in the area. And recently, many men have been carried out completely drained and dying in a horrifying way, and authorities investigated that case. But all the women there are humans. So the case is still hanging for Sherlock Holmes to solve it. He thanks her for the information, and she is also rooting for the immortal cultivator to get rid of that evil. Next, he arrived at the flower water house, but the house is pretty empty because of the rumors. The lady of the house comes there, and she is not feeling well because the business is not doing well. She notices King Yang thinking that he's a customer. She gets ready to bring all the girls and serve him the best wine. He introduces her that he is the disciple of the Yushi Peak from the Sky Realm, there to exterminate the evil and uphold justice. And inside his heart, he is feeling like a superhero whenever he says those words, to uphold justice and exterminate the evil. She is so happy to see an immortal master who have come to help her. So she throws herself onto him, shares her trouble with him and informs him that about two months ago, a male guest was found dead in one of the girls' bed, which terrified her girls. And after that, every three days, another male guest had died. But what creeped King Yong is when she informed him that those guests' kidneys were all gouged out. She also informed the authorities and officials, but they couldn't find the culprit. And her last chance was to send a message asking for help from the immortal masters of the Sky Realm. 
King Yong didn't thought this to be a kidney harvesting case. He wonders if the demons are shortage on kidneys and needs to make up for it. Anyways, he is fine as long as the culprit is not above Foundation Realm. He then asks her when was the last incident. She informs him that it was day before yesterday. So tomorrow they'll have another death at their flower water house. She squeezes his hand onto her melons and asks him to help her. Otherwise, she will go bankrupt. He gets ready to help her after all that is his mission. Then a beautiful lady comes down from the second floor asking the madam of the house about her thing that she asked madam to get. Since the business is not doing well, madam asks her to wait a little longer. Once the immortal master resolves the case, she will find someone to buy them for her. Her name is Lena and is shocked to hear about the immortal master. If that's the case, she gets ready to wait a few more days. Don't tell me that she is the kidney harvester. Madam apologizes to King Yong for Liner's death. She then tells him about Liner's attitude and informs him that Liner is one of the top girls of her house. After that, Madam gets ready to show him to the guest room for him to rest. She also informs him that all the rooms of almost all her girls have had deaths. Except for Liner's room. She also shows him Liner's room. He gets ready to stay in the guest room and tomorrow morning he will switch rooms with Miss Liner. Yo bro, wants to switch room with such a beauty who is being perv here, huh? Madam and King Yong comes to Liner's room. Liner's room is a little late at night. Madam informs her that tomorrow morning Immortal Master will switch rooms with her. So she needs to temporarily move out after she wakes up. This makes her more mad because she doesn't want any random man to stay in her room. And the man is doing that because he doesn't want the culprit to harm her. She gets into her business mode and teases him a little. Which makes the madam mad because Immortal Master isn't like those other men. Since she can't defy Madame, she prepares to follow her instructions. Afterward, Madame leads King Yong to the guest room. There, she takes his hand and informs him that her life and livelihood depend on him. If another murder occurs, even the few remaining customers will flee. He resolves to do his best to assist her but, for now, requests that she leave the room. However, she insists on speaking with him further. Later, he regrets missing the brothel event in the game because the reward wasn't appealing. Now, he eagerly wants to go back and participate. He readies himself to become familiar with his sword, and has also brought a cultivation book. He begins learning the techniques from the book, and thanks to his demon blood, he quickly masters them. Using these techniques, he senses the presence of women in the house, which surprises him. His interest in learning more about cultivation and techniques grows. Afterward, he practices various moves and poses. Once he completes this mission, he plans to visit the library and borrow more techniques. Then, he reverts to his dog form. As a dog, he can't do much, so he settles into bed for the night, sleeping soundly. Meanwhile, Lord Yohua flees from demons pursuing her jade spirit body. The demons seek dual cultivation with her to enhance their own abilities. However, she's no weakling. Drawing her sword, she strikes a powerful pose and defeats them using a water bowl. Despite their pleas for mercy, she remains ruthless, splitting their heads.